Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to model and render renders just like these using SketchUp and SketchUp Diffusion. Let's go. All right, so the first step is to select your product. I've just gone for a very simple place tool and I'll share the link as well. You'll find the dimensions and more in this Amazon listing. So first step is to save these images into a local folder as shown and then open PureRef and drag these images into PureRef. Now I'm going to move PureRef to my other window and then start modeling on SketchUp. Now, if you'd like to learn SketchUp for web from scratch, then you can check out my full course on YouTube, which shows you each and every tool in SketchUp and how to access SketchUp for web as well. So the first step is to create a new file and let's use the millimeter units for this tutorial. Let's delete type for now. And the first step is to create our placeholders. So you can see the size now is 36 centimeters by 22 centimeters and the height is 20 centimeters. So I'm going to activate the rectangle tool, click once, and then let's give a dimension of 360 comma 220 and tap enter. And let's push this up by 200 mm using the push pull tool. I'm going to select all of these, make it a group. This is our placeholder and let's copy it and place it on the side for now. Now I'll enter this group. I'll activate the tape measure tool and I'm going to give draw the reference line at 30 mm. Now let's push this face all the way to that reference line. Perfect. So we have our tabletop or place tool top. Now I'm going to select this, activate the rotate tool and I'm going to copy it over by 90 degrees. Now let's activate the scale tool and scale it all the way till there. I'm going to move this in. And I'm also going to enter this group and reduce the thickness by 15 mm. Now let's make this a component called this place tool. Perfect. Now let's enter this group and let's create our openings. Let's also make myself smaller and tuck this to the side here. And let's look at these images and try to eyeball the opening size. So I'm going to activate the circle tool and let's create a circle. And I'm going to give it to about 60 mm but before that i'm going to increase the number of sides so let's increase the number of sides to say 24 s tap enter maybe 36 s yeah 36 s feels a lot more smooth and now i'll give a radius of about 60 mm perfect now activate the eraser tool delete that and let's use the push tool to create that opening there Let's tap J to toggle visibility. Now, if you'd like to learn how to assign shortcuts, you can check out that full video, the link on top or in the description. All right, so now I'm going to create a circle there of about 40 mm. That works well. And let's push this out. So we've created our openings. Now what we need to do is select these edges and move it in. So I'm going to move it in by 30. Similarly, your as well. All right, perfect. So we've created our place tool leg. So we need to rotate this. So activate the rotate tool and tap it to the green axis. And now I'm going to rotate this, let's say by about eight degrees. I'm also going to push this all the way to the edge of that stool there. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to search for the flip tool. So shift S to use the search feature in SketchUp for web. Activate the flip tool and then activate this face as reference. Tap control to make a copy and copy to the midpoint there. So it flips it perfectly. And now we need to create our supports here in between the legs. So I'm just going to draw a circle here on this face and we can reduce number of sides here, maybe about 24 sides. And let's give a radius of about 8 mm. Just going to move it out and place it here. Make this a group. Enter the group and then push it out. All right, so we placed one and I'm just going to make sure that it is touching the edge or at least overlapping. And let's copy this over along this edge here. So select it, activate the move tool and copy it along the edge here. Now we need to make this smaller. So activate the scale tool and let's make it smaller there. Now, if you'd like to be precise, we can use the solid tools and then cut these corners here. You can see that it's sort of overlapping. 
So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to search for subtract and subtract this here. So you can see now we've cut it perfectly. Right click paste in place. Let's do the same for this object here as well. So copy it again and search for subtract and subtract this object there and paste in place again. Perfect. Need to do the same here as well. Now we can use the flip tool and I'm going to flip it to the center here. We also need to make this edge here sort of flat. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we can do so again using the solid tools. So I'm going to copy this and subtract this object. Also, please note that when you use the solid tools, the components entity goes away. So we will need to create a fresh component from scratch. So I can simply delete this for now, make this a component, call this place to leg. Now I'm going to enter this component and give an offset of about 3 mm. And this time instead of pushing it, I'm going to activate the move tool. And then I'm just going to move it down to the end point of our placeholder. So you can sort of get that effect that we require. Let's do the same here as well. So this should be about 3 mm. Select the face, use the move tool, activate to the blue axis and then place it down. All right, perfect. So now we can flip this over to the other side. So let's use the flip tool and flip it to our midpoint there. All right, so we need to fix this top here as well. So we can do that by selecting this activating the scale tool and then simply pushing it up a bit. You can also draw a reference. Scale it to that end point there. Perfect. So now it's intersecting with this object, which means we can now use the solid tools. So I'm going to copy this search for subtract and get a clean edge there. Now let's paste in place. All right. And let's flip this over to the other side. Now again, when I use solid tools, it becomes a component. So let's make this a component, call this tool. Use the flip tool feature and flip it over to the other side. All right, so we have decent geometry now that we've created and which is sufficient for us to create the renders. So I can delete our placeholder here. I'm gonna move my pure ref to the other monitor. And the first step is to delete all these guides here. So let's go to our display and click on delete all guides. And let's create some scenes. So we can create a scene from this angle here. And let's go to our scenes window and click on the plus button to create a scene. I'm also going to create a scene from this angle. Or maybe even from this angle. After which, it's a good idea to reduce the thickness of these edges as well. So we can do that using styles. Click on edit. Switch off profiles and click on done. I'm going to save this file. All right, so we're done with the modeling part of this video. And now let's do the rendering. And we're going to use SketchUp Diffusion to create the renders. So let's first create some studio renders. So what I'll do is I'll change the scene. I'll switch off sky and maybe change the background to pure white. And now let's switch on diffusion. And let's say create a studio render of this product of this place tool furniture. Let's get the material from our Amazon website. So this would be sustainable solid elder wood. And let's click on generate. All right, so you can see we have a really good result just by the basic prompt. And uh, I also noticed that the style doesn't really affect the render. So even if you have a sky background doesn't really affect compared to my previous model. So that's something which you need to keep in mind. And uh, you can also download these images or add them to your seat as shown. 
So we have really good results just from a basic model. It also rounded off the edges. So you can see it automatically rounds off the edges as well. Some of it is not perfect. This is more than what you can ask for without having any material on your model as well. All right, so now what we can do is we can make all of these single group. And now let's create our product render of our stool here inside a kid's room. So let's bring that in from 3D Warehouse. So go to 3D Warehouse, search for kid's room. You can select any scene from here. I'm gonna go for a smaller size scene with some toys. So probably this here. And then let's click on download and then place it in our model. All right, so this model is not set up correctly. So we need to fix this. Right click and click on explode. Now let's just select these elements here. Right click and click on make group. Let's enter the group. Right click anywhere and click on add snaps. So I'm going to snap it to the bottom here. Double click to place a snap. Perfect. And now let's simply draw a plane at the bottom there. And now let's select this group. Use the move tool. And if you select the snap and place it on that plane, it places it perfectly. So that's how you can fix those orientation issues. Now let's delete our plane there and let's move it into our playroom scene here. And also let's move it down a bit. So it's sitting correctly. All right. And now let's go to our scenes. Let's check if the scenes are fine. All right. I'll also create a scene like this so that more of the toys are seen as well. Now let's open SketchUp Diffusion. So now you can notice that a prompt goes away and also those renders. So this sometimes happens when you have to reload SketchUp for web. So just to be on the safe side, make sure to download all those images and also add it to a scene here. So let's add this again. So place tool render product render of place tool placed in a kid's room toys around some additional prompts on the lighting and ambience naturally lit and let's change the style to interior photorealistic so a very simple prompt let's see what it creates i'm going to increase the model geometry so more of the sketchup model is expected and let's click on generate let's add it to our scene so you can see we have a really good result just by using basic prompts it also gave us different options as well I'm going to add it to the scene just to see how it looks. And I'm also going to download the images. Now, some of these renders are not perfect. You can see that the edges are not correct, but it definitely gives you a lot out of nothing. And you can also notice that it sort of rounds off the edges as well. All right, guys, so we come to the end of this video. I hope you found this video useful. We explored some 3D modeling techniques and also some quick 3D renders with SketchUp Diffusion, which is a generative AI render model. Now, the future for visualization is definitely some AI rendering. You can implement it right from the start of your design process. And you can see from a very basic 3D model in SketchUp, we were able to create renders just like these. So you can see the potential of this model. And now with OpenAI Sora, we'll probably be creating videos as well with SketchUp and more. Now, if you'd like to support this channel and also keep me motivated in releasing videos on a daily basis, then follow my Patreon page. Once you sign up, you'll get free access to all the models that I will model and showcase on YouTube. And we also have courses on SketchUpGuru.com where you learn how to create photorealistic renders with SketchUp and V-Ray. We'll also talk about the various design standards that us architects use and a whole lot more. So do check out the courses on sketchupguru.com. Subscribe for more such videos. I'll see you guys next video. Cheers.